Hey, here we go again. Different setup now in Guadalajara, Mexico. If you've seen my previous video regarding the Macs with M1 chip, you probably know that I'm all up for Mac Mini. Not because people consider it as a Best Buy, because you actually do need a decent display, a keyboard, and mouse. The reason why I'm not in favor of the current M1 MacBooks is the old design, which will hopefully become obsolete in 2021, hopefully. So obviously I will compare it with other products of the similar categories, in this case, Mac Mini with Intel CPU that is still sold by Apple. Question for you, does Mac Mini with M1 look like a good purchase and why? Please answer in the comment section below. Now the intro and let's go. Hi guys and welcome to Digital Marketing Channel. My name is Marco and this is your weekly fix of tech news, leaks, rumors and opinions, everything about Apple and their competitors. If you're a fan of this type of content, subscribe now, leave a comment below, hit the like button and don't forget to enable notifications so you don't miss the next video. So let's take a look at our contenders. On the left side we have the newest Mac Mini with M1 8 cores, 3.2 GHz CPU and integrated 8 cores GPU. These models are coming with 8 gigabytes of unified memory, everything system on a chip. We're not gonna talk about the extras though, but you can select 16 gigs option for only $200 more, otherwise the base option will cost you $699. On the other side, we have Intel-based Mac Mini with 8 Gen i5 processor with 6 cores and up to 3 GHz clock speed. Intel version relies on UHD 630 graphics. Mac Mini with Intel starts with 8 gigs of RAM as well, and if you want to upgrade it, you can go all the way up to 64 gigs, which sounds mind-blowing for mini desktop. Base version will cost you $1099 only. Well, in terms of pure power, it's no secret to especially if you look at recently released benchmarks, that Apple's new baby M1 annihilates even far more superior processors, mobile or desktop. With 8 Gen i5, it's no different, especially in a single core performance. Multi-core is super impressive as well. And while these are all just a benchmark results, it also depends how well optimized are the apps. The M1 performance for Apple's first-born Mac CPU is nothing else than astonishing, not to mention in terms of power efficiency. Although at first it may not seem that obvious, since Mac Mini is not a laptop, but at least based on the test, the M1 is like the most power-efficient processor in the computer on the market today. Apple's M1, as previously mentioned, only comes with two variations with 8 and 16 gigs of unified memory. These may prove to be enough for most of the apps, especially those that are developed and optimized for Apple's M1. However, for those that require more memory, these numbers don't give much comfort. Having a flexibility to add more memory could be necessary if the apps are more demanding and more resource hungry. I mean really resource hungry. Normally when we talk about gamers, this is not a typical target group of Apple at least for now. There are some speculations and signs that Apple is slowly getting interested in a gamers market as well, but let's just leave that story for some other time. You can check more about this subject in one of my previous videos. Quick summary, if your need for more memory, most definitely Mac Mini with Intel processor is the way to go. Before we move on, if you guys like what you've seen so far, make sure that you leave a comment below, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. It means a lot for the future of this channel. Thank you. Now let's continue. As far as graphic performance go, the M1 is bringing some utterly impressive performance and capabilities for integrated graphics. Even if the benchmark results are coming from GFX Bench, which is mainly for mobile devices, it still makes you wonder Where's the limit? Especially if we look at the results when compared with mid-range discrete GPUs like GeForce 1050 GTX and Radeon RX 560. These may not be the newest model, but still those results are impressive for integrated graphics. Now keep in mind, with all the power that comes with Mac Mini's chip, there is no support for external GPU. You got it right, if you want superb power of eGPU, your only option at the moment is is Mac Mini powered by Intel. You may need it, 
or not. This all comes to the apps that you're using. With M1, for example, Apple's video editing software Final Cut Pro flies like there is no tomorrow. Adobe Premiere, not that much yet. Both Mac Mini alternatives can be pushed up to two terabytes of super fast SSD storage configurations. But Mac Mini with M1 starts with 256. Intel version starts with 512, which doesn't justify $400 price difference for Intel, unless you look at more rich I.O. and network capabilities. So what's the conclusion? I mean, I could simplify and tell you right away, go for Mac Mini with M1. It's being more future-proof, comparable to the Intel version, which is from 2018, 8 gen, 14 nanometer, and so on. Frankly, there are only few specifics that could take you to Mac Mini with Intel. Having necessity for more RAM, eGPU, corporate environment network demands, and apps that may still have issues achieving its full potential through Rosetta 2 emulation even if some initial results are showing otherwise. As far as we know, and based on the available information, only if you are a small minority, you should go with Mac Mini powered by Intel. Everything else is obviously on the side of M1, and it should be the one to buy. What I'm personally curious though, is Mac Mini redesign and new capabilities in the future. We have to wait and see, but I have no doubt it's coming. Thank you for watching Digital Marketing Channel. My name is Marco, talk to you soon. Have an excellent day. Bye.